Fellow viewers, welcome to my brand new channel. My name is Chimmy P3, or you can call me Pablo. I cannot wait to bring you guys brand new content every week that you guys are going to laugh at and enjoy so much. Now, let's get on with the video. Ghost type Pokemon have always been one of the coolest types of Pokemon since the original red and blue. But in each new generation up to gen 4, the ghost type has always been a little bit mediocre. And it has been from the lack of new ghost type Pokemon. And also the physical special split really had their card. Ghost type moves were always physical moves until gen 4. In Pokemon Pearl, there are only 12 ghost types in the game. But 6 of them are post game and 2 are legendary slash mythical Pokemon. So, we're only left with 4. To make our life only a bit easier, we're going to start off with Spiritomb because getting him on an emulator is next to impossible. This Nuzlocke is going to be difficult, but I do think I can beat the game. Here are the rules. Rule number 1. Permadeath. Rule number 2. No items in battle. Rule number 3. You can only catch the first ghost type Pokemon I see in every new route. Number 4. I cannot pass the level cap of the gym leader's ace. And lastly, it must be played on set mode. So, can I beat a Pokemon Pearl Hardcore Nuzlocke using only ghost types? We start off our journey getting attacked by running through some grass, opening an old man's briefcase, stealing his Pokemon, and then getting attacked by some very large pigeons. We beat down on these pigeons, and then Dawn comes back to the lake to find us with the stolen Pokemon. She proceeds to become a Karen and goes and tells Professor Rowan that me and Chris, my rival, hit some licks. Luckily, Rowan is for the people and he let us keep our Pokemon. Take that, Dawn. What a normal beginning to a 10 year old's journey. We make it to Rowan's lab and we get to name our brand new Pokemon Spirit Tomb. Even though she is a female, there's only one name I could have named her, and that's McLovin. McLovin the Spiritomb is going to be our only ghost type until after the Valiant Wind works battle against Mars. That being said, Spiritomb's level up moveset isn't the best but he does have great stats so he should be fine, right? The early game is pretty easy for Spiritomb since he is a ghost type but one downfall is that he has a slow XP group so leveling up to the current level cap will be a bit of a hassle. My first battle with rival Chris was supposed to be a cakewalk since some of his Pokemon can actually touch me. But I was wrong. This guy's Piplup made my life a living hell. He only used Growl for 5 straight minutes, giving me a negative attack stat, and he made McLovin have a worse attack stat than Onyx, you know, the one that has a worse attack stat than Caterpie? After 10 minutes of just spamming Shadow Sneak, we finally won the battle and gave Chris his first L of many. Fast forward to the first gym, and I had my doubts going into the gym battle because of how defensive Geodude and Onyx could be. All while in the back of my head, I'm thinking, Cranidos has Pursuit, so he can do major damage to McLovin. I was thinking of going in with a hidden power strategy, hoping I can get either Grass or Water type, but I kinda got Hold and got Dragon type. So I just scratched that idea and threw it out the window. My last plan was getting lucky, using Hypnosis and Confuse Ray and praying for the best. The battle starts against Rourke the Dork and I outspeed the Geodude and hit the first Hypnosis. I then proceed to Faint Attack as he stays asleep this turn. I follow up with a Shadow Sneak hoping it would leave him out of potion range but it does a little bit too much and he heals up. But not to worry because the next Faint Attack just knocks him out. Here comes Onyx, one of the worst Pokemon in the whole series. He's Butt Juice. I misclick and go for Faint Attack instead of Hypnosis but he misses his Rock Throw giving us a break. The next Hypnosis lands and from there on out life becomes a whole lot easier. I Faint Attack then Confuse Ray him to hope and pray when he wakes up he hits himself. The garbage can of a Pokemon ends up waking up but he hits himself with confusion and from there the rest of the battle becomes a cakewalk. I Faint Attack and Shadow Sneak the Onyx till it goes down and here comes the big scary Cranidos. Pokemon AI is not that very good so he goes for a Leer and I do massive damage with Faint Attack. Then I follow up with the Shadow Sneak and the rest is history. We acquired the first gym badge but more importantly you just got swept by McLovin! We go on to battle Mars and she's a total bum. The only precautions I have to take was putting a Petra Berry on McLovin just in case Zubat toxics but he ended up going for a bite which barely did any damage to me and one faint attack and a shadow sneak is all I need to take him out. The fat cat with 
enormous speed comes out and she's a total pushover. She can only hit me with non-stab faint attack and three faint attacks later she's down. Some good news, our next Pokemon is available after this battle and it is Drifloon. Luckily, I was recording on a Friday, which is the only day you can get a Drifloon. We encounter it, but I did not know he was already level 22, which is the next level cap. So I can't really use him until the second gym. I name him Moria after Gecko Moria from One Piece because he's hideous. He is a calm nature, which is actually very good. So he is going to be a special tank. I get through Eternal Forest and I encounter my third Pokemon, Miss Drevious. I name her Perona after another One Piece character because she's ugly as shit. She has a lonely nature which ups attack and lowers defense. It's not that good, but nah, it's terrible. Piranha has a garbage moveset, so I'm gonna go cry as I grind. That's brutal because she already has some really bad defense. By the way, One Piece is the greatest anime of all time. Please argue in the comments on what is the best anime. Not so long after, we challenged the second gym leader Gardenia. She should not be too difficult because Moria is part flying type, so realistically it should be a breeze. But I was so wrong. Moria takes out Cherubi and Turtwig with two gusts and then comes out her stupid Rose Raid and boy did she give me a fight. She outsped everything in my team and made my life hell. Gus barely did any damage so I switched out to McLovin and what a mistake that was. I could have lost my boy McLovin if it was a crit so I quickly switched out back to Moria. These grass knots barely do a thing to me but her magical leaves are killer. She paralyzes me and it goes downhill from there. Being unlucky as usual, I switched to Perona and prayed to God that she could do something. I confuse a Rose Raid and then go for the worst move in the game, Psy Wave. Psy Wave could either be very good or very bad, but with a stroke of luck, two Psy Waves manages to give me the win. What a battle. With a half broken squad, we come out with a second gym badge, barely alive. So funny story guys, I just realized that I did not hit record throughout the whole Galactic Hideout and Hard Home City arc. So yeah, I have to give you guys some catch up. So right after I beat Gardenia, I caught a Ghastly in the O Chateau and I named him Gloria. I don't know why, I just felt like Gloria was the perfect name for her. She is a lax nature which increases defense but lower special defense. In a way that's good but not really because she's already a glass canning. During the unrecorded gameplay, she also evolved into Haunter. Moria also had a change when he evolved into Driftblim, which is going to be super clutch in the next gym battle. But the thing is, coming up, it's a tricky level cap because in Diamond and Pearl, the third and fourth gym leader have the same level Pokemon. So trying to not over level level 30 is going to be a little bit difficult. Third gym leader time, and this is way too easy. Maylene's only real threat is her Lucario, but the Goat McLovin handled that with ease. She started with a Metatite, but once she saw McLovin come out of the Pokeball, she quickly retreated and Machoke came out. I go for a Hypnosis, but I missed the first. But right after I hit the second one, then Dream Eater does the rest from there. Lucario comes out and with a blessing from the man above, Hypnosis hits and the rest is history. He stays asleep for 4 turns and I hit him with 4 Dream Eaters. This has gone way too easy. Metatite comes back out and he gets off 2 Detects just delaying his demise. A couple shadow sneaks later and I finish him off. I can't believe I get to say this one more time, but you just got swept by McLovin. There's not much that goes on between the third and fourth gym leader. So we're just going to go right into the crash awake battle. I taught Moria shockwave so that he can deal with the Gyarados. The battle starts and I use shockwave and somehow I get a critical hit on the Gyarados. I don't know if the crit mattered or not, but I'm just going to say it did. Next up is Floatzel. Floatzel has Pursuit, so I have to be careful with this. I use Shockwave and somehow, some way, I get a critical hit and I one shot the Floatzel. I for sure think that that Shockwave crit mattered because if not, I could have gone down to a Pursuit. Quagsire is the last Pokemon. So all I had to do is switch out to McLovin, Toxic him, switch back out to Gloria, Hit a curse since he can't attack me with slam or mud bomb. I just wait there and he goes down eventually. This fourth gym battle is way too easy. I teleport to Celestic Town and I see Ooh la la Cynthia's grandmother. What it do, baby? 
Oh, you want me to get rid of that blue-haired My Hero Academia fan over there? I got you, sweetie. I proceed to confront that Deku lover. I splack him and then save old grandmother's day. After all that, the leader of My Hero Academia fan club confronts me and tries to explain to me why My Hero is the best anime ever and I just ignore him because he's stupid as shit. Moving on, we enter the fit gym and one thing that really pisses me off is that why did Game Freak think it was a good idea to input a math into a gym puzzle? Like, what if I don't know what 5 plus 3 is? Or 5 plus 3 plus 7 is? Like, I don't get it. The next one is 18 plus 22, which is clearly 30. Oh, yeah. Guys, I swear, I'm not a bad at math. I'm in an account. So we challenge Fantina. We both start off with Drift Blim. I go for Omni Win, doing more than half as she uses Gust, and the next Omni Win takes her out. She then brings out her ace Miss Magius, and she goes for Shadow Ball. I was so lucky it wasn't a crit because if it was a crit, I would have lost Drift Blim right there. I use an Omni Win, and I leave her with more than half health. I then switch to McLovin, and I get hit with a critical magical leaf. I debate whether or not to switch, but I just go for a sucker punch, but she goes for a confuse ray. This is extremely bad. I say fuck it and choose sucker punch knowing the consequences if it fails. And the god RC is looking over us. I get past confusion. I hit a critical hit sucker punch. I really don't know if the critical hit mattered, but that doesn't matter right now. McLovin has saved the day once again. Gengar comes out, so I'm still not out of the water. Still confused, I use Sucker Punch, I break through the confusion one more time, and I one hit KO the Gengar. Woof! If this battle had gone any other way, that could have possibly been the end of the run. But McLovin, our hero, saves the day. We move on to our second to last fight against Chris, my rival, and no surprise here, Moria just sweeps him. Game Freak really just made him a pushover, and it makes me so mad. Like, God bro, how much of a bum can you be, bruh? Before we fight Byron, I gotta warn y'all viewers, this could be the end of the run. No one on the team can learn a fighting type move, and this is gonna be the hardest battle of my life. I thought for hours of how to deal with Byron, and this is how the fight went. I start off with McLovin who's holding a Figgy Berry for extra health against his Bronzor. Since I'm a Dark Ghost type, he can't use extra sensory. So the plan for this fight is to spam nasty plot like crazy and try to sweep, but everything gets ruined. I get confused Ray and of course I hit myself. Then he follows up and hits a hypnosis. Can I get any more unlucky than that? 4 turns of sleep later, I'm left on 18 health and I finally take out the damn Bronzor. Next comes out Steelix, hear me out. I spent 1 hour doing calculations seeing if Spiritomb can kill the Steelix, but I microwave brain so badly. I forgot Ghost is resisted by Steel in this gen and I did the calculations wrong. I leave Steelix with a quarter of health and he hits me with the Ice Fang and I fucking lived it. I couldn't believe my eyes. McLovin just got spared and saved the run once more. One more Shadow Ball and I knock out the Steelix. His Ace Bastiodon comes out and I switch to Drift Blim. I know this strat that I'm going to do is a pussy move but I had no other choice. I set up 4 double teams and I start to spam Omni Wind hoping one will give me an Omni Boost. And lord and behold, on the 4th Omni Wind, I finally get the boost and I start to spam Shockwave. This goes on for 6 straight minutes, so I'm just gonna speed you up to where I finally knocked him out. This was one of the most stressful and hardest battles I have ever had. 6 gym leaders down and no deaths yet, let's fucking go. Next up is fighting the My Hero fandom again. Hey look, it's Deku! What? Bro, look, it's Bakugo. Where? I make it to the co-leader of the Deku fans and it was a pushover of a fight. McLovin just spanked him with ease. God, my hero fans suck at Pokemon. Next up is the leader of the Bakugo fan club's Mars. This battle gave me so much trouble for no reason. We take out the Golbat and Bronzer with relative ease, but her fat cat gave us so much trouble. She did not miss a single hypnosis and started to spam faint attack. Four turns later, I finally wake up and I hit a toxic on the fat cat. But then he proceeds to make me fall asleep again. I decide to go out to Moria and she crits me with a faint attack, too close for comfort. I switch out to Gloria and she almost dies. The only way I could win was to let the toxic take its course. It comes to McLovin having 20 HP and if faint attack crits we can lose McLovin forever. But like the god he is, he survives with a sliver once again and down goes the leader of the Bakugo fan club. She really had me there. 
Nothing fun happens, so we move on to the seventh gym fight. This gym has one big issue for us: Sneasel. Since I cannot use Gengar, I have no fighting type coverage to be able to beat it. So there's a huge chance someone dies here. Also, the hell can really fuck me over. I start off with Drift Blim and use Fly. It one shots the Snover. Then comes out the dreaded Sneasel. Sneasel hits a faint attack for massive damage. I go up into the sky as I get hit by hail. But luckily, Sneasel uses Taunt and I hit a Fly for huge damage. The only way I could win against Sneasel was if he goes for Avalanche which is negative priority. And that's exactly what he does. Down goes a Sneasel but I have 7 HP left on Moria. She sends out a Bomb of Snow and he's a huge threat. I switch out to McLovin to tank a shot but luckily he goes for Grass Whistle and misses. I toxic the Obama Snow. I think that was a bad idea but I don't know. He hits an avalanche. I'm left with 57 HP because of hail. I'm hoping he'd use Grass Whistle one more time because the AI is dumb so I went for a nasty plot. Very bad mistake. He hits a devastating wood hammer that leaves me with 5 HP and the hail takes on McLovin. I just lost my one chance of even making the Elite Four. I lost my Lord and Savior. Even though I go on and win this battle, I feel like I already lost the run. I've won, but at what cost? Sayonara, McLovin. You're a warrior and a goat. I'll win this one for you, brother. I make it to the Galactic Hideout and I get the Dusk Stone and finally evolve Miss Drivius into Miss Magius. I then somehow teleport right in front of Cyrus, the leader of the My Hero Academia Club. I wonder how that happened. He then blabbers on about how My Hero is a whole bunch better than Naruto and Bleach, and then challenges me to a battle to settle this debate. First comes up Murkrow, and I start off with Moria. I use one double team, and he uses Drill Pike, and he misses. I then click Thunderbolt, and I one shot the Murkrow. Here comes my Kryptonite. I go for Thunderbolt, but he outspeeds and misses a Screech. I leave him with a little bit more than half and I risk it and use fly. He hits me with a very hard ice punch but we live and create him with fly. What a miracle. I switch out to Perona and destroy Golbat. As a reward for smacking his opinion through the window, he tries and gives me a My Hero medal. As soon as he leaves I throw that shit away. God, he doesn't understand that I'm a One Piece stan. As I make it to the top of Spear Pillar, Cyrus goes and summons Lord All Might and then does not shut the fuck up about the anime. We are then challenged by Mars and Jupiter. As soon as the battle was going to start, Chris runs in to have my back. Hopefully he can do something good. I start with Moria and just start spamming double teams because that's my only chance and it goes to shit very fast. I got hit with Confuse Ray and hit myself twice as Christian's mud chillax is just being there doing nothing. A couple turns later of the same bullshit and I finally break through confusion and hit an Omni win and we get the Omni boost. I'm getting super lucky with the misses from my double team as a skunk tank comes out. Bronzor hits me with Confuse Ray once again and I hit myself. But the good thing is skunk tank misses Night Slash. I break free and use a plus one fly on skunk tank. It takes it to a citrus berry range as it misses another Night Slash. I use fly once more and take him to the red. But the stroke of luck ran out and down goes Moria. But Moria didn't die in vain. He brought the skunk tank with him because of his ability aftermath. Rest in peace, Moria. You were a great soldier. I sent a Haunter and just pray for the best. He hits Shadow Balls as he knocks out a Golbat. Munchlax dies and good riddance. Here comes Chris with his Staraptor. Staraptor takes out the last Golbat and out comes the fat cat of doom. The stupid cat uses hypnosis on Gloria, but thank god Chris uses Kolos combat on Perugly, leaving it in the red. It eats his citrus berry and regains to a quarter health. Fat Cat follows up with a Shadow Claw on Gloria and she lives and Chris takes out the Fat Cat with close combat. I seriously thought we were going to wipe here but we have two Pokemon left for Cyrus. Cyrus is up next and since Chris healed us up the dead Moria is at the front of the party. We switch out Machoke so he can kill us and I can bring out Gloria. Gloria dies to one Dark Pulse from Honchcrow but in her last breath Gloria hits a Sludge Bomb and poisons the Crow. Out comes my last Mon Perona. Cyrus uses a super potion while I hit him with a not very effective shadow ball leaving him with a sliver and he hits me with a super effective dark pulse. We live and the poison takes him out. Next up is the scariest pokemon he has, Weavile. And yeah we don't stand a chance, one ice punch and we're done. 
Well, that was attempt one of this run. I had so much fun using Spirit Tomb for the first time ever. I think if I had Gengar, this would have been so much different since he can learn a lot more variety of moves. I don't have time to do another attempt this week as I have another challenge run planned for you guys, but if you want to see a second attempt using Gengar this time, please let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for future videos in the next coming weeks. And as always, it's been real. Chimmy out.